Who did it better, Jamie Codd or Frankie de Tori? <laughs> Welcome along to the Cheltenham Countdown Extra Show, which is available on the Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel if you're watching it on this channel. Thanks a million. If you're listening as a podcast, you can indeed watch it on the YouTube channel. As ever, the guest is Frank Hickey, who's busy already looking at the anti-post portfolio. Are you, Frank? I was actually trying to enter this competition, but uh, yeah, we'll say anti-post portfolio. Super We're focused. focused. <laughs> Super focused as ever. No jacket this week. No, I thought I'd be hip, cool, young person. This week, as opposed to uptight modern day vicar. Did you think you, uh, did you, think you, <laughs> did you, think you nailed that brief? A hip, hip young cool person, <laughs> do you? not, no. <laughs> um, you stole already one of the questions. Okay, anti post portfolio, I do always ask you, have you added to it over the weekend? No, no, I didn't add to it until I got a little bit. Ah, look, there's no point. I said, there's no point getting worked up about running plans, but yeah, it's potentially uh, flying the ointment with Tully Hill winning. Now, I wouldn't fancy Tully Hill myself in the Supreme, personally. Um, but they may well look at it and go, oh, we can run Tully Hill and Mystical Power and Supreme in between the two of them, they might win and run Ballyburn in the other race and he will just win anyway, mm. um, which would be disappointing and that would impact. I think that would then send Gidley Park into the Alder Bartlett. So it'd be a double whammy. Mm. But you look, Now this is it a is reference to your re ah. resignation, Aka, uh, that yeah. you would resign if yeah. that, the, on the Friday. But there was actually a question is, on our own show. I reckon that, are, are, the are the company paying Winnie Mullins to scupper my resignation bet, is it? I'd like to think they're I'm not. I think that's probably what's happening here. Well, I'd like to, I, 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 I'm not <laughs> sure. I mean, you're a great man for a conspiracy, but I, th <laughs> I think that's not probably good. Just remind our viewers and listeners, what are the four you've got in the uh, face bear? Look, yeah, Manila Indo in the cross country, Monty Starr for the Brown Advisory, Gidley Park for the Ballymore. Um, I'm going to like Ballymore, I don't care. It's it's a new sponsor. Bingham, come on. Um, and Ballyburn for the Supreme. Okay, so that is the, the resignation. Obviously, you do need Ballyburn. I don't know where it says. Willie, are you watching, yeah, Willie? Willie? We do need Ballyburn in the Supreme, never mind or that. Or else. <laughs> or else, indeed. <laughs> um, those who listened, I think the first show was a uh, podcast that we did, and then producer yeah. Mark said, get those lads on television. They are just too good. Um, but on our first show, you put up Lanchy Lady as yeah. a prospect for the mayors. Now, she ran at the weekend. She she was pretty good. I thought she was, like I said, when I put her up, I thought she was the one sort of left field one you could see. And uh, I look, I think she was entitled to that at the same time. She was getting a stone, including the mayor's allowance, uh, off What's Up Darling. Um, but she beat him fair and square and beat him well. Um, my small worry would be she was wearing a tongue tie. And um, it's not something that would have been on my radar too often, you know, about paying attention to horses wearing a tongue tie for the first time. But when Zana here ran in the triumph and was favourite, he wore it. And that was telling you some all's not well. And obviously the most recent uh, example is Marine National wearing a tongue tie for his chase debut. And you thought, oh, he's won grand, no problem at all. Mm. But it was telling you what was coming down the line. And that would just be my one issue with her. Now, the only thing I would say is, um, it was horrible ground to go and a lot of them were walking home and she fairly ran up the, uh, the straight. And yeah, maybe the tongue tie is just a small thing, but it would just be a small concern. But look, if she turned up on the day and she was 25 to 1, Probably have a few bobbing her each way. Yeah. Um, thinking she's I don't hit think you cut her for the mares. Did you? you gave her a nick, like oh, okay. something small. Much, yeah. Again, you know, she was weak in the market, suggesting maybe she needed it a bit. She was very weak. I think we put her on, put her in around oh, eight, eleven, was it? And like shade of odds on. I remember. Yeah. She's, like, she's got out to nearly three to one in exchange at one stage. I think she's come back. She's come back in a little bit and never kind of got bigger than seven to four, fifteen to eight. But um, yeah. Look, the mares probably lacks a bit of depth. Um, yeah, like and her breeding's good. So yeah, I think you know if you're involved in her, you'd have to be positive. Yep, Lantry you know Lady, the uh, mayor we're talking about for Henry de Bromhead. Uh, right, we as ever are looking back on the Chetlam Countdown show that is available on the Paddy Bear Racing YouTube channel or as a podcast where Rory and Ruby was back. Ruby was back and looking orange. Did, did you notice that? Uh, did I notice this? I, <laughs> Some I of the commenters to noticed I, it too. I had to watch the whole thing with sunglasses on, <laughs> even though I watched it half nine at night. He wasn't actually on a sun holiday, I think. I think he might have been 
on the old slopes. I was wondering, was he off a broad? He looked, it looked a bit like a golfing, do they? Like I know from years of caddying that like you go out and you go, ah, it's not that sign today and get away, I'll get away without the sun cream. And then you come home and you feel grand and then you have a shower and you're like, oh my God, my face on fire. <laughs> you know, that's what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, he was, um, he was glowing. Uh, was our Ruby Walsh. And Rory, again, the Bond villain, uh, continues to be the, uh, the waiver for him. Didn't assassinate anyone this week, though. No, well, Ruby was back. I think it's yeah, a different man to try and, try and assassinate, to be fair. <laughs> no, to be fair, Ru Ru Ruby did make a mistake, but we'll get to that Ooh, later. Oh, I'm intrigued. Okay. Uh, a couple of notes from producer Mark. Uh, I want to remind you about Cheltenham Fan Zone tickets available. Check the show notes. It is on the Friday. That's Go Cup Day of Cheltenham Week. It is in the Camden, as it has been. It's a sellout every year. I assume we get two each, don't we? we you can take mine. I won't be around. Sterling work? Yeah, I, well, for Sterling work, for sure. I'd want more than that, actually. I, I want a week off after chat. Uh, which that, which would be nice. Just put, like, it's real pressure on Mark now to deliver, like, uh, doing the I'd, podcast, Do you so. know what? I think we could swing two <laughs> tickets. And you can have mine. I think you can have mine. But it is brilliant fun. Uh, I've seen videos from a producer, uh, not producer, Tom, the real host. Tom, he was there a couple of years ago and he, he told everyone that it is I went in. Crack. I went in after racing one day. Obviously, I'd be working and uh, it seemed like good crack. Now, was that my like, tips were being put in there as well, and they weren't great. So I would have been better crack if they were good tips. <laughs> well, if the uh, the famous Black Friday, if that happens again, which is a reference we have in the trading room, where you guys have oh, yeah. to the day when um, Jane Mangan unfortunately went west yeah. and Salsify got up. Oh, well, that'd be great for punters. That would be great. It'd be great atmosphere in chat. Oh, the absolute bonkers in there. Yeah, like, that would be serious. That was five winning favourites on the Friday. Six. It was. Let's go through it. Um, our Connor. Okay, it? Triumph. Won the Triumph. He was second or third favourite, but yeah, they were all nearly joint favourites yeah. in the morning. At Fisher's Cross won the Albert Bartlett. Even money, I think, Ted Field won the County Hurdle. Gold Cup was... Was that Bob's word? If you say so. Um, Salsify and the Hunter Chase. Salsify the Hunter Chase, Oscar yeah. Delta. And Can't Alderwood... Remember. Alderwood. Alderwood won the Grand Annual. Would it be right? In the green and gold. Again, I have a feeling... Oh. My, my racing spirits are oh, telling back. me now in the minute. Oh, the prophet is back. <laughs> oh, to be fair, your, your, your tweet about uh, Ken Copeland was outstanding. I, would, I wouldn't have known his name. Wouldn't you? No. I, I wouldn't know his name, but I know him because I've watched some videos of him. He's a weird, weird yeah. man. Yeah, he's had a bit There's of work on the face as well. A bit of work. Yeah, a bit of work. There's on. a great video of him trying to justify spending his, uh, you know, con contributions on a private jet about like how it was too good a price to turn down. <laughs> Well, he needs to spread the message. You yeah. know, he needs to heal. This is a reference to last week where Frank, uh, Frank amazingly became some sort of preacher. Uh, the preacher is actually producer Mark who was mouthing all of the uh, content to him. But, you know, you were very good. Yeah, you were very good. So, Chatham fans on tickets, check out the link in the show notes. Also, turbo power prices are now available daily, I'm told, from 10 a.m. So, keep your eyes peeled on the Paddy Power website. We're going to be doing the same in shops, by the way, uh, during the week of Monday's big day one treble was Ballyburn, Constitution Hill and Lossie Mouth. Ballyburn, so... Going for the Supreme, according to the Turbo Power Prizes, Frank. Well, if, and we're recording on a Tuesday afternoon. The Tuesday one was the big one on the Friday. So Gino in the Triumph, Gallup de Champ in the Gold Cup, and Dino Blue in the Mrs. Paddy Power Mares, which at the time of recording boosted from fours to sixes. And I'm assuming that's not running money back as well. So phew, happy days. Yeah, Turbo Power Prizes, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Um, also, I've got to tell you about Punter's Panel, which will be coming down this on this very channel soon. Patrick Mullins, Fran Berry, and Joe Logue will be on the panel. So get your questions in to producer Mark using fdhm at paddypair.com. Okay, right. Thank you, producer Mark. That was way too much to talk about. Questions from our own show for you, Frank Hickey. Um, harp 10. This isn't really a question, Harp 10, uh, or Harp, point to Harp. Couldn't disagree more with Frank about Tishan for the bumper. What, like disagree about what like that he won't win it or he mightn't even run it possibly both uh, well I think it's up in the air whether he runs there's still like we'll see how he comes out of the race and there's always entry that's where Nichols usually goes and the reality is trainers are creatures of habit and look odd, odd times they break from their their kind of tried and trusted route but in majority of the time he won't go there if he thinks he's got a horse that's more long term um, even if he did run it, I made the point, doing that extra race up to much to form. Mm -hmm. He wasn't as impressive as I think people made out. Like, I'd be all against him anyway, personally. You're very and soft at the moment. When I said I was oh going to no, ask no, you this, oh you, no, you no, gave no, me the no, response. No, what I was going to say is that, like, 
Those bad opinions are the reason I'll get a good bonus this year. Bad opinions? Just opinions. Get rid of the word bad. They're just opinions. Your opinion harp is just as strong well, no, as, as Frank's. I would call them good opinions from, from my bank balance point of view. Okay, right. Speaking of opinions, Ben Pallet, one for Tom. Frank looks like a modern day vicar or priest to you Irish boys. <laughs> no, now, actually, obviously today you don't. I, I actually laughed because he's actually spot on. Like, it looks... <laughs> As I said, I didn't look at cool what jacket vicar? I picked. I just put my hand in and grabbed a bag. And I was like, whichever one I got, it's like a lucky tip. And I was saying, like, I was like a more fat, uh, unkind to the camera looking uh, father from Seventh Heaven. Do you remember that program? I, I haven't watched it, but I've seen a few ah, clips. from 20 odd years yeah, ago. Like, yeah, but, yeah. you know, people of a certain vintage will remember it. We're getting a weird amount of pastor and preacher and priest <laughs> yeah. mentions on this show. Um, okay, also Dan oh. Mayhew, uh, he thinks that you're just lazy, Frank. Uh, Dan lazy. Mayhew wants you to price up the 2025 Turners, Mare's Novice, Champion Hurdle and Gold Cup. I don't know why those four races, but he, you know, get at it. Why won't you price just those races lazy. up? Well, I took it as a compliment as the only way he thinks he can get a rick out of me is by looking for a race 15 months ahead. Do you know, the ones the ones that are close by are just, nah, they price them too well. No rick. Um, but no, I, 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 look, to be fair, I didn't put a huge amount of effort in. Oh, really? But I did quickly. Breaking news. I know, First I, I had a crack at it. Like. Okay, come on. I know they're not going up. Okay, but this is what you were, you'd be thinking. If I was putting them up now, he asked for like, what would it be? Yep. This is just very quickly. Look, there'll be markets up as soon as the Cheltenham races end. Next year's one was, will go up. Um, Turners, six to four Ballyburn. Who cares the rest? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Wins everything. Okay. Uh, Mayor's Novice, four to one Maureen, seven to one Flora Fuzil, Let It Rain, ten to one Baby Kate, twelve Aurora Vega, twenty Barnhash Primrose, twenty five Switch from Diesel and Hollybrook. Put an interest in anyone. Uh, Champion Hurdle, four to seven Constitution Hill, uh, six to one State Man, sixteens Mystical Power. Ballyburn, 33, Tully Hill, Firefox, 66, the two mares, Golden Ace and Dice Arenos. Okay. And Gold Cup, 4 to 1, Gallop in the Champ, 4 to 1, Ile Francais, which would probably interest people, I think, but has to prove he gets three and a quarter miles around Cheltenham. Uh, 12's Factor File, 12's Faster Slow, 16, Jerry Clam, 16, Monty Star, 21, Grey Dawning, 25, Shishkin, 33, Awoko, and Stay Wafe. All right. That was my stablet. Very quickly. Frank Hickey bookmakers, those aren't actually available, but I'm sure you yeah, slide into like, your DMs. They wouldn't, wouldn't be, they wouldn't, like as in, like realistically, the races will be banged up pretty quickly afterwards. And yeah, the only thing is, look, are you really going to be getting a huge price about one that's just won at Cheltenham? No, no. Okay. Jeez, uh, we're supposed to talk about what they were talking about yesterday on the show, and, and we may as well. We are going to talk about the... There was only about four minutes conversation, I know, yeah, it wasn't, it, yeah, it's two races that are a struggle to talk about. <laughs> I, I turned about. it on, went on to put on the kettle and came back and it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Good cup of tea, so. Uh, right, the... I want to I go... I'll, this Only for the first time I'm going to give it its full title, the St. James's Place Festival <laughs> Challenge. There's one one question I thought was the most interesting oh, I missed a whole lot of them. Okay. The go Junta on. Marvel question. Oh, Asked Ruby, yeah, yeah. So one of the, the viewers asked Ruby about Junta Marvel, yeah. Yeah, I Where think that was probably the most interesting one of everything they spoke about yesterday uh, when he said she was back in training mm -hmm. and that she might go to Cheltenham. Did he say that? He did, yeah. I, I know he said she's unlikely to run over hurdles, right? You're so unlikely to so run she over, could she run in could, the bumper. Like you said, she'll run the bumper because I don't know whether she'll go to Cheltenham or not. Okay. But that must mean there's a chance she does go to Cheltenham. Now you're looking at her and you go, if she was given an entry, is it next week is the entries for, for, the, bumper. for the bumper? I'd be going, hmm. I assume she's priced up for the she, bumper still, is she? Or I don't think she is. No, she's not. Haven't seen her. Okay, but you so, can request the price as always. So like, I'd, look, I'd wait and see. Look, look, it's down on the best to make a difference, but I'd wait and see if she entered next week. And I'd be more interested in her than I would like Maureen or any of them in that. I thought she was very impressive when she won a punch down the way in which she swept into the lead. And she's kind of idle a little bit, I thought, in front. But... Um, yeah, she has plenty of ability, and I just thought it was very interesting that yeah, Ruby. in a year when Willie doesn't have a standout bump horse. In a year? Yeah, well, Ruby was asked about J Junta Marvel, and um, it would have been nice if Tom went back in and said, is she going to run on the boat at Jetland? She should have said. Yeah, and the other thing I picked up on... on script like I am. Yeah, the other thing I was going to say is... Uh, What's this kingy business? Well, on? right, yeah, yeah. Rory, um, he, he doesn't seem to call him Alan King. It's kingy. kingy. It's kingy, the best buds. But Rory was sticking the knife in. No Nina. So he mm. was like, Kingy's grown a pair with Edward grown Stone. Grown a pair. I was kind of going, like, it strikes me as he went, all right, Kingy, how's the farm? He'd just go, it's Alan. 
<laughs> it's Mr. King to you. Thank <laughs> you, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. King to you. Yeah, this is uh, Rory. So basically, the lads were asked uh, regarding Edward Stone. It was a good question, actually. Would that type of run, again, the same as the game spirit, forcing the pace, could he force an error out of El Fabiolo? Definitely could. Yeah, well, Ruby was very quick to say, no, he's going to set the race up for El Fab and Jambon. I wouldn't think it's that simplistic. Like, Jambon's jumping has been er was erratic the last day. El Fabiolo's jumped better. But he, I wasn't overly blown away with him at Leperstown um, at the DRF either. Like, I'm on record as not being a fan of Edward Stone at all at all. It was against him in the article he won. Been against him ever since. I was retaken with his way he won at Newbury. I was like, Jesus, really liked it. Like, you know, as in, been, I kind of felt like they've been riding him the wrong way all this time. The belt him out in front and jump and travel. And um, yeah, like I'd be, I'd be half tempted to back him kind of wow, each way. It's quite a turnaround. Unbelievable. Like I wouldn't have parted my money on that horse at all. And now I'm like, I love the way he won at Newbury. Really did. I wouldn't think it's as, as simple as saying, oh, He'll just set it up. Like, if he jumps as well as he, he's generally a good jumper, you know, you can get away from around Cheltenham two over two miles, like, if you're in a rhythm. Okay. Are you listening, Kingy? Yeah. Do the same? Yeah. Tom Cannon? I, yeah, and keep being ballsy. Get him running from the front. <laughs> Kingy's grown a pair, so sorry. <laughs> um, Gary asked, and um, this is Gary asked the lads via Tom, whether State Man could go chasing next season and Ruby's answer. Normally there's a bit of politics with Ruby. There has to be, right? He still works for William Mullins. But he basically said, State Man cannot jump a fence at all. Clearly. Yeah. Like, there's zero chance. I, you know, Tom kept kind of, but, but you think he might try next year? You're like, clearly his jumping, you know, his schooling Pop. was horrendous. So. Yeah. No, he's not. And as the, ma the point was made, he's literally the second best hurdler around. Like, what do you have now? Eight great ones? Oh, something nonsense, yeah. What did Hurricane Fly end up with? 22. Okay, he's got a bit to go. Right, he's a bit okay. to go, but I mean, yeah. he's seven, isn't he? Yeah. Right, so he's won eight. Oh, he's not going to get 22. No, he's not going to get 22, but like, as in, Constitution Hill's hardly going to go to, to Punchstown because it's so close to Cheltenham. Does so, I mean? <laughs> Couldn't it's possibly a way do, game. It's a way possibly game. couldn't do both. I thought we wouldn't mention Constitution. Uh, but anyway, look, weekly mention Constitution. We but like that could be nine maybe for State Man. And next thing, like you're looking into next year. Like he could get, you know, another three next year, four. Yeah. Why would you go for fences, like? Unless Ballyburn or well, one of the novices. Well, we, we, we never know. Chasing, yeah, really, we, we, we never know what's going to happen with the novices. Okay, we talk about the races they previewed. We will, yeah. Okay, right. I have it written down. The St. James's Place Festival Challenge. It's not called the Hundred Chase anymore, is it? It is absolutely Fox Hunters. It is. And actually on the Paddy Power website, I did check the price this morning. Hunter you Chase. just say the Hundred Chase. You just say the Hundred Chase, yeah. Uh, it's a poor old St. James's place. Okay, straight away, Rory says the main thing here that perhaps is obvious, but maybe not as obvious as you think, is this test of stamina is underestimated by many because of he put some good points in. It's obviously Gold Cup Day. A lot of these horses have run in small field points, small field hunter chases. They've never experienced a gold cup pace, which they seem to go at because amateur riders. Was that something you bought into? Ah, it's not gold cup pace either. Like if you ever compare the times, it's generally. But even the start, no, would it not ah, like the maybe, first, first like maybe, let's say, maybe circus? a bit. Yeah, yeah, they do. Like and look, they, they're they a bit pumped out. up, and I don't know. Is it like we're going gold cup pace? But like, there's a reason why they're not professional jockeys because their judgment isn't the same. Um, it's a point, but then at the same time, um, you know, is the jockey that important? All right, put the bones on that because Rory did straight straight away. Come on, Rory. In the old days, straight away, bingo, chalk it off. In the old days, it was actually owner jockeys that often rode the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, who's my favorite Corinthian jockey? Obviously, David Maxwell, he is class. But I was thinking Terry Dooman. You're doing. He's not a Corinthian jockey. I'm just taking the mick out of him. Remember uh, Barracuda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for his dad. He, he was a professional. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure, he wrote um, Caswell Bliss as well, as well didn't he? Yeah. yeah. He should have won on, on Barracuda. I backed it. Was Iris' gift beat him that year? He did win two other stairs. Yeah, I, didn't back, I didn't back either of those. I don't remember those. Anyway, who's your favourite amateur jockey right now? On the money. Amateur jockey right now? I can't say I have a favourite. Okay. I, I, I don't have any that I'm like... You know, it's like when people are giving out to David Maxwell. It's factored into the price. Mm -hmm. You should know what you're getting involved in. You know, don't be giving out if it doesn't work out the way you want it to. Most, like. most don't. I think most now are aware most of that. Most don't. Yeah, we I still have fellas. Like there was one. He, he rolled on a bumper there for Kingy. 
um, last month at Doncaster. I can't remember the name. Yeah, and it was a bit out of his ground. He's down for second, I think, oh, did he get behind second uh, a Dan Skelton horse one. It might actually have been Royal Infantry one, actually, was it? The one that won the list of Bumper at Newbury. Might well have been. And, um, oh, he got abuse on Twitter anyway. But I was oh, like, like, yeah. Twitter though, like, or X. Ah, you know, yeah. People. But I mean, you know, you know, it's just like, you know what you're getting involved in. And if you don't, you're like, you're the issue, not the jockey. Yeah. You mentioned the jockey or it, it, the general consensus is you need one of the, let's say, big five. I don't right? think you do. Do you, like, do you go on then? We'll just go, like, the winning jockey the last 10 years, Bradley Gibbs, Patrick Mullins. One of the Bee Gees. Maxine O'Sullivan. Yeah. <laughs> Not Maxine O'Sullivan, Bradley Gibbs. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Alex Edwards, Harriet Tucker, Bryony Frost, Nina Carby by two, and JJ Smith. Do you know, uh, do you know what I mean? As in, like, fair enough, Nina would have been your go to. Yeah. And Patrick Mullins obviously won the more experience. But, like, any of the rest, you wouldn't be going, you know, and no disrespect to you, you'd be like, oh, what's Alex Edwards writing in, in the Fox Hunter and going, I'm going to back that just because. You know, um, it just goes to prove, I think it, most of them can win yep. if they're on the right horse on the right day. And, you know, can they just remain a little bit calm? As you say there, if you go too hard, just, you know, in the first circuit, you can find a lot of the time, you know, a lot of years, there's only three or four or five in contention, jumping three out. Like you had the one year there where, um, oh, was it Victoria Pendleton? Yep. Finished fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth was staying on, yeah. But like they finished in the heap that year, if you remember, like there was a rake of them. But like the majority of the time, it is kind of strongly run and not that many get into it. So okay. yeah, look, I wouldn't I wouldn't let a relatively unknown jockey put me off back. Fair enough. Okay. Right. So what about the horses? Uh the lads yeah. were keen on well, Rory's asked about the top of the market straight away, batted it back. Premier Magic, who was nine to one on Monday slash Tuesday, he said he's the bet. Yeah, well, I backed Premier Magic. In 2022. <laughs> okay, so not last year. Do you, uh, the year before. The year before. Where did he finish? Uh, he's pulled up. Excellent. So, like, when I actually was going through it, like, as in, I was really keen on him because he had beaten Porlock Bay in a point who'd obviously won the 2021 version of the Fox Hunters. And I was like, he was a big price. And I was making my case. And then he was pulled up. I was like, dang it. And then last year when he went and won. 66 to 1. Was 66 that? to 1. Oh. I was like, oh, no. But... Um, like, if you look at his overall record, um, since he finished second in a point in February 2020, which is four years ago, he's only been beaten twice when a four length third to Voss Lane Stratford and the day he was pulled up um, in 2022. So he has a really good record and he did it well. Like, he was probably midfield, and but like, crept into contention and he was up there near the front, like six, seven out. And um, yeah, he was a good winner. I think he's a fair price, definitely, yeah. yeah. I would prefer him to, um, at the prices, it's on the line and bill away and Fern's Lock, definitely. Um, but I do think there's a couple in there that are interesting. We get okay, to. we'll get to them, yeah. Uh, oh, I definitely wouldn't put anyone off the price, so I think he's a... Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, will Bradley Gibbs ride again? It would be, ah, 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 staying on, staying on. <laughs> Up the hill. Oh <laughs> uh, leave the leave the jokes to me. Head J- leave time. the jokes to me, PK. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, Rufy was asked about Bill Away. Um, again, the political kind of he's a bit of a character came oh, out. God. Uh, he's a monkey by the sides of things. He's a monkey, but his jumping, his jumping. Like, you know, fair enough, he's one of once. There was years. Remember he was beaten, was a part of Bay beating the head. Mm. But he jumped terrible. And then last year, Christ, his jumping was awful. Like he made a balls of water jump. Like he'd hit two or three before he ever fell. And his fall was just like, you know, <laughs> it was almost like he went Stevie Wonder for a minute. Could even see the fence, just walked right through it. <laughs> you know, it was horrendous. <laughs> um, yeah, look, he's obviously eye-catching at Nace in that the amount of ground he made up. But I think it's an element too if they got um, racing a fair bit out and he was picking up pieces. Look, if he happened to jump adequately even, He'd have a chance. But we know enough about him now. But exactly. He's not a novice. He, he's 12 like, so, and yeah. he makes mistakes and yeah. he doesn't seem to be learning from it. Like, do you know? Okay. I'd say, yeah. Pass. Like, if they were doing horse IQ, I wouldn't think he'd be getting the mints that we put it that way. Okay, right. Okay. So we've got the Bee Gees, we've got Stevie Wonder. Right, Fern's Lock, uh, 5 2 favourite. Ruby said he will win the Fox Hunters at Aintree. Uh, yeah, I'd agree that I think three and a quarter probably find him out. I'd always won 3 1. Was it 3 1? 
Goran or three one of fairy house on softest ground, but it wouldn't be the same gallop they'll go on the fox hunter and a bit like Boss Lay was found out by the trip I think last year. I I could see something similar with Ferns Lock to be honest. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I think again at the price, I whatever about will he win or not, the price would interest me at all at all. Okay. And again, people give you out you set the price. That's because that's what people want to back. But for me, wouldn't go near him at the price. Okay. Right, so the guys settled on Premier Magic. They actually both kind of settled on Premier Magic, but Ruby did put up Secret Investor as well when quizzed about it. He was kind of running through the field, and I think Ruby liked the fact that he's fit, he's well, that sort of angle. Uh, Paul Nichols has a half decent record on the race as well. You mentioned the Victoria Pendle horse. Did he win with Pocklin as well? Did he? No, 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 no. he was second or third in, I think. Um, but yeah, he, the Pocklin won that. I think he did, yeah. I think he ended did up he? there at one stage, yeah. Uh, Chenkos might won. have as well, and all he, those. He definitely won it twice with Pasha Polar. And yeah, uh, so. Paul Nichols, I think, is worth a look. Secret Investor, 12 to 1. Brother slash uh, Father Frank. Do you mean with, with Sleeping Night? Why not? Going back, yeah. I'm pretty sure Sleeping Night won it for him. Why not? Going back, I would guess 2004, 5. Are you waiting for the, you know, you have, oh, yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait for the old, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. yeah. He, he, no, but that's, that's not being told. That's just off the top of my head. Yeah, okay, yeah. This, and I think, actually, the Coleman Sweeney rider for him. Really? Okay, fair enough. I just, it just popped into my head. It could be wrong now, like, but that just came into my head. It could be completely wrong. We'll find out when you get the earpiece uh, get working. Your selection. Spirit, people <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> Your selection for the... I know, I'm going to touch on a few. Like, I think, you know, it was like, we only have two races and one of them we didn't have the entries for. And we don't have the entries for this either. But like, you know, the lads are a bit lazy. They could have done a bit more homework and touched on a few. So I'm going to touch on a few. Um, Fier Jagoon. Uh, look, might be more of an entry horse. He was only 11 to 2 last year when on seating early enough. Um, he'd bolted up in three points previous to entry, and the form looked decent. Uh, uh, and then he went to Chetlam on Hunter Chase night, and he won over two miles on good ground. So maybe like three and a quarter might stretch him, but he's won points over three uh, on easy ground. But um, he's won, be half interesting if if decides to run him. But I think entry again might be, he's Bradley Gibbs as well. Um, then there's another one, Regatta de Blanc, mayor who won three points in a Taunton Hunter chase over 2-5. Uh, look, she was value for far more than the um, the length distance that day when she beat Django, and Django followed up beating that warrior of the turf tea clipper at Warwick on its next start. Um, and I say that very sarcastically. Yes. I, um, I, I, the, the glint was there, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, but that far, like, again, she's uh, completely unexposed. Like, oh, no, she's six or seven. Um, and she has plenty of ability. She won. She'd won. You definitely give a second look too if she turned up. Um, Sin nominee won. Very interesting. This is very interesting now. If this runs, I think it. I think it's on the agenda first. Only eight year old trained by Fiona Needham won the John Corbett Cup at Stratford in okay. general good ground. Were you? <laughs> no, that's their Hunter Chase day. Yeah, again, good. some good Hunter, like Vosley won. It's um, the, they have the champion hunter chase there, yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. Stratford. So yeah, that yeah. can be good. Won that over three miles, three furlongs, three, three and a half furlongs maybe. So stamina, no issue. Hasn't beaten twice at Cheltenham in two runs. But again, you have to, like, she's not, like, you know, relatively young. Um, she was third and second, second last May. She made a mistake and hung a little bit after the last cost of the race, uh, the horse that was in front. Um, and she that she had passed, came back and nailed her close home. Um, but I thought she was very impressive when you go watch her run at Weatherby there at the start of February. Um, that was proper soft ground over three miles. And Stop looking for your inspiration no, no, for producer he Mark. Was, he, he's telling me what the name means. Yeah, I know exactly. Oh, go on then. In Latin. means Sin without a name. Oh, that was handy. Yeah. But um, I don't get any notes. Again, it was kind of testing enough ground at Weatherby. Jump granted, he made a mistake. Two out her at the last. But the way she picked up and ran away on that sort of ground, beat Benny's King. Um, I was very taken with it. I'd be interested. Again, you're looking at it. Fiona Needham, no disrespect, but people are going to latch on to maybe more, you know, high profile trainers. And yeah, this would be a price, you know. Sin nominee. Sin nominee. And have, again. Have you a price now? I think it's like 16, 20. Okay. That sort of 20 to 1, I think. So um, it's one I wouldn't be rushing to back now because I don't think it's going to shorten up too much. Fair enough. Between now and. A couple of days beforehand, I would think. Um, and the other one from last year, I thought Rocky's Howie yeah, was. I know he didn't win, uh, and I had been putting him up in this last year. Um, used to be trained by my own schoolmate, James Delay. 
always give James a big shout out. He's a friend uh, of the show. Does he watch? I, I don't know if he watches, but he had two winners there in the last month. Uh, Rushan and um, King's Halo. King's Halo's a horse going Oh, Kingy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a good trainer. Good lad. Um, this Hockey's Ro Rockies, how I was with him, switched to Declan Queeley, was bolting up in point to points uh, before going to Cheltenham. And just when you go back and watch the Cheltenham run, he's up in the front the whole way. He makes oh, four or five jumping mistakes. And even then, no, he wasn't going to beat Premier Magic, but the loose horse basically brought him to a stop on the running and he's finished fourth. I think he'd have finished second, but for that, and considering the jumping mistakes he made, I thought it was a massive effort. Again, um, he was only seven last year. He's only eight. He's going to have probably even further improvement in him. Um, and he had three more points after Cheltenham. He was beating a drama hand, but he beat It's on the Line of Ballon Dennis. Dennis. Yeah. Where's that? Do you know? Usually they're Cork, so I'll just go with Cork. Yeah, they, yeah, most of the point to point tracks are in Cork. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I don't know. But um, what was interesting about that run is they didn't make the running with him, which they've been doing in every run. I just thought, was that with a view to going back to Cheltenham, where instead of going out in front and maybe just using that tiny bit, you know, extra petrol, that we maybe just sit maybe, you know, sixth or seventh and come into it a little bit later. Um, now, we haven't seen him since, so I don't know, is it the plan? I'm hoping it is, but I thought he was, like a lot of people were saying, oh, it's on the line was the one that took out last year. I'd be more Rocky's Howie, considering um, he was up there the whole way and the jumping mistakes and hampered by the horse after the last. If he rocks up, I think he's a right chance. Pun intended. Right, so Rocky's Howie and Sin nominee are two against the field in the At the moment, they would chase. be, yeah. I, you know, Excellent. again, I wouldn't be telling people, oh, have a bet. Even with the non-run, no bet, just, have a look at the entries and see. And like the other thing as well is like you look at the price of winners of this, it's very mixed. Um, you know, it's very mixed. Like last year, six six to one, thirteen to eight favourite, sixteen to one, sixty six to one, seventy two favourite, twenty five to one, sixteen to one, thirteen to eight favourite, six to one, fifteen to two. So Boomer it seems to bust. be like yeah. it seems to be like the market gets it right or badly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So like you know, it's just something okay. to bear in mind. Um, yeah. Right, that is a rather extensive uh, cover of the Fox Hunters, Hunter Chase, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. We're going to take a break and we'll be back looking at the Kim Muir, uh, Fook Wolwen Kim Muir as well. We had to give it the full fair, title. They fair, didn't say that once. Fair, fair play for attempting that. It was, wasn't great, was it? Uh, <laughs> well, right, no, take a break. I'm pretty be... sure I'd make a ball, I'd buzz the first word. <laughs> Fook? <laughs> He's now Swedish. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be back straight after. Introducing Paddy Power's new money back tokens for racing. The flexibility to choose the race in which you get your money back offers. Claim your token via the homepage banners or through the promotions page. Add your selection to your bet slip from any eligible money back race. Apply the money back token to the selection. Choose your stake and place your bet. Easily track the horses on which you've used a money back token in my bets. Get your money back as a free bet if the horse finishes second, third or fourth. Get brand new money back tokens with Paddy Power. Thanks for rejoining us as we now turn our attentions on the Kim Muir, or at least let's remind everyone why we call this the Junior B Cheltenham County. What is, like, because we would have had a lot more viewers now from the UK that haven't listened to this as of last year. What does, what does Junior B mean, Frank? Junior B hurling in football would be for the people who aren't as committed training-wise as like senior and intermediate, but still want to play a little bit of hurling and Gaelic football. So, you know, they might have a little bit of extra weight and drink seven or eight pints okay. too many per night. Do you remember a fellow called James, I'm going to try to pronounce his name, Groak? Yes, from Balancholic. Okay, interesting. You say lack of commitment there because James has got in touch with myself and producer Mark. He's played junior B football with him in Balancholic. Did you know? <laughs> He's after sending us in photos of... Um, Quite an athletic looking <laughs> Frank Kiki. Have, have a look, playing think, Junior B football. I think. Um, Give him a swipe there, swipe across. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Socks are high. I'm not sure about the high socks. Oh, uh, I used to always wear my socks high. Oh, so yeah, I'm not sure about that. See, we didn't have the short ones they have these days, so like, yeah. you drive me mad having them rolled around your ankle. Yeah. Do you so remember, the, ma do you remember the match? Up. I think this is we won a Junior B mid Cork in uh, Coltsford. Yeah. Junior B football mid Cork. Do you remember having that much hair as well? Um, on my back or on my head? <laughs> <laughs> Did you score in that game? Uh, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I scored nearly every game. Oh, good man. Goals as well as points. Goals, no, wow. no goals. Um, 
Yeah, goals. no, we did. Obama certainly that was the day. Yeah, uh, I believe it if was, I remember, I Junior it was Junior B mid Cork victory a few years ago, wearing number goal, fourteen. Think, yeah, really? well done. Thanks a million for that, yeah, James. Thanks, James. Lovely, yeah, lovely touch. Hear, yeah. Lovely touch from James. A Grort. To be fair, I, second I, name Grort. I kind of given up on football in my Ballon College days. I was more you were hurler, hurling only. So I just played Junior B because I didn't have to train too often. All right. You know, yourself. Alec is in. It was good fun, like you know. Um, and the commitment levels were, as you said, junior B. Ah, look, junior some B. lads might take like I wouldn't have taken it as serious, maybe as I would hurling. Um, but like the most important thing is you still got to play. Yep. You know I mean? If you're listening to this as a podcast, go on to YouTube and you can see the pictures of the fine fettle that is Frank Kicking. I was like, where's the rest of me? <laughs> <laughs> like, How right. long ago was that? About three stone ago. <laughs> on to the Kim Muir. Uh, Rory didn't tell us who he was. Do you know who Kim Muir was? <laughs> oh, no, Jesus. Yeah. He, he, he died in a war. I think he was a cavalry man. Uh, but a brilliant uh, bit from the show was that Ruby, I didn't know this, Ruby was rode in the race because it's restricted to amateurs and was beaten on Papillon. I actually, I actually had a look, right? So Papillon had won on um, what was now Trials Day off a mark of 140 off Norman Williamson and then went to Kim Muir off just three pounds higher. Oh my God. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what Ted said. All I just do is don't fall off. And he still got beaten. What position did he finish? Eight. Ruby. Eight of 15 or 14. Ruby. Good research from producer Mark, who's now doing the scripts for these. He found that. I, I must say, I was very surprised by that. Yeah, and then he was only beaten half length by Bobby Joe on his next start after the Camure in the Irish National. Two national winners. Uh, Two imagine national that. Legends, uh, yeah. And national legends, as you said. Okay, to be fair to the lads yesterday and indeed to yourself, there are no entries for the Camure as we record. There will be by the time the show is out, but you have got a sheet. I've been little... looking, I've been looking at the entries as they're going through. I didn't have the complete list, but, but you've got I had idea. a fair idea of okay. what was entered and what wasn't. Okay. Good um, time Johnny was a starting point for everyone. Five to one favourite last night. Um is he in the entries? Is it, it was he entered? I don't think he was when I was looking, but I was only looking at about oh, okay. eleven. Okay. So there was another okay. there was at least another forty five minutes before. Rory called him the obvious plot. The obvious plot, but like again, he's a terrible price because Every shrewd and his, mo and his mother wants to be on him, just to say I'm on him. But like, his price is terrible. Like, it's not as simplistic as going. He ran on. He ran on the DRF, being twenty odd lengths, like twenty seven lengths and fifth. Um, obviously a very good winner to pretend over hurdles. He still has to really do it over fences. Look, I know Tony Martin's one handicap chase the Cheltenham Ford Dundee or be the one to jump off the page to, but. Has he a chance? Of course he does. Is but his price, price good? Hmm. Price horrendous. Okay. And like he can go and win. He can go and win now. But I mean, it still doesn't make the fact that 5-1 to one is... Is it 5-1 to one this? Was yesterday anyway. Yesterday? Yeah. To me, it's horrendous. But like, again, it's the weight of money we're taking. Like, and people go, oh, what you're laying? Like, Cheltenham Antipost markets are vibrant. Like, they really are. Good. Yeah, like, because in... Probably because of the show. Oh, yeah, but Most obviously, paid. yeah. Tim, don't back that horrendous price and then they go in and plough into it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll check the figures. Yeah, um, Right, um, Rory said that Irish horses probably actually, I don't know if he was referencing handicap chasers. He oh, said chase, only, chases yeah, chases don't get the don't same get sort of... Look, I think it's probably an element of um, handicap chasers have probably been running in handicap hurdles and, you know, might be a little bit more, showing a little bit more of their hand by the, the time they handicap rent, yeah. or not to maybe be as excessive. But like um, at the same time, I think it will come down to the individual horses. Like yeah. you see, like horses who've been to Britain for a couple of runs won't get maybe as high a mark because they've shown the handicap or what they're doing, as opposed to ones that have run in three novice chases and haven't run on the handicap yet. The handicapper will probably give them five or okay. whatever. Well, let's talk about last year's winner, Angels Dawn, who was eight to one on Monday slash Tuesday before the entries were officially came out. One assumes it's going to be targeted. Obvious chance, but maybe, maybe just too high in the handicap or wouldn't fancy her. No, uh, one three one last year. It's rated one hundred and forty one in Ireland after the run the test is. She's going to get, it's going to get two or three at least. So like she'll get in the race, but she'll be near top weight. Um, no, nope. wouldn't pass. Be free. Wouldn't okay, be Rory went on to Dunboyne uh, to no nominate Dunboyne. Great place. <laughs> I know you live there. Yeah, yeah. The horse named after um, wonderful town. A wonderful town. Wonderful town. Well, the form figures aren't great for the horse at the moment. Uh, it seems to be... You made a fair point, though, about, like, strong in the market, has shaped very well to a point, and then just cut out. If it is it's just as simple as his wind, and they fix it, he would be interesting. But it would worry you how quickly he cut out, and at the Grand National trial, it was just at the weekend, what do you have? 
three weeks. Like, I don't know the technicality of getting a, a win up. I know it's not the biggest, you know, ordeal and they can recover quickly, but, you know, can you run two weeks after getting a wind up? I'd say you can, yeah. You probably yeah, can. Yeah, you could, yeah. yeah there, there will be no major issue there. Um, 14 to 1. Rory kind of made the, the wider point. He'd be, bigger. He'd be bigger than He'd 14. He'd be bigger? Okay. He'd be bigger than 14. I think, again, I do think he's a bit more ground dependent. I think he's better on testing ground than if it came up good. What if, like, know, out of nowhere, sense. boom, he smashes through the door. Jamie Codd, book the ride, Dunboyne. That'd be gas, wouldn't it? it he's not officially gas, retired, but, he's, but, but, he, but he is, right? I don't know what the story yeah, is. Yeah, well, he hasn't ridden, I think, in point to points, or but he's not actually said he's stopped riding. Yeah, he hasn't said, I am retired. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Are I think, you? I don't know, who did it better, Jamie Codd or Frankie de Tori? <laughs> is Frankie, yeah, Frankie, Frankie de Tori Frank take a leaf out of Jamie Codd's book. Frankie. Is he retired, Frankie? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. I think he's planning to retire in 2030. Yeah, yeah. When the money stops coming, but it, it's not at the moment. Okay, so Dumboy in 14 could get bigger in the day. Rory said that the, the, the Gordon Elliott horses, the, the progressive chasers and then the regressive chasers as well. He Not only does he have those, but he's got the jockeys as well. He's got a rake of the amateur jockeys in his yard too. Oh yeah, like it's in, like it's just, just like what's Gordon good at? Like staying handicapped chasers, he's exceptional at. So he's obviously someone you'll be looking at and seeing here. Um, jockeys, important again, but you know, it's not the be all and end all. Like I think, you know, I don't think Derek O'Connor is quite as good as maybe he was seven or eight years ago, Jamie Codd's retired, like, how many are there anymore? Like, Nina's retired, Katie and Walsh retired, like, the ones who have been going to seven or eight years ago, most of them are gone. So, like, you know, again, you're looking at who's rode the winner the last ten years, Pat King, Lucy Turner, Jack Kennedy, that brilliant amateur. Yeah, I know, it was COVID year. <laughs> I know. Uh, Rob James, obviously, stealing seven. Uh, Derek O'Connor, Noma Parlin, Gene Andrews, Jamie Codd won it twice, and Robbie McNamara. So you have obviously good, but you have some jockeys who would be, you know, um, would be would be considered like just above top tier uh, of amateurs of one or two. So again, I wouldn't let the jockey completely turn you off either. If fair enough, if you like a horse, like. fair enough. And Patrick Mullins. Well, it's not really a race that he's got. The, 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 they kind of scammed through a few. He could pick up an outside ride if yeah, he's allowed. Like, 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 like the advantage is, if you get wind of what one of the top jockeys is riding before the market does, then you have an edge. But if you're doing it after the market does, it's already gone then it's fixed, factored yeah. into your price, so you're, you're not really getting the edge out of it. Talking about that, the lad said you can find out how, how jockeys are jocked up early. How does one find that out? You won't find out. It'll just be... Because on the It'll Racing be, Post sometimes, let's say on a Tuesday before a, a Saturday uh, race, you'll see a jockey. Is that official or is that a guess? It's not necessarily official. Like, as okay. in, sometimes it is and other times it isn't. Like, okay. I've, like sometimes you've gone, oh, I want to back that anti-post, but I'm not sure if it's running. And then you see it jocked up and you go, oh, it's running and you back it. And then Thursday declaration is not declared. Yeah. Do you know? It's, it's not, not on the BHA website or anything like that where no. you see a jockey jocked up. Okay. Like, look, it, it means more than likely he's going to ride it. But like with this, it's more... What, you're, what you'll find is that there'll be a small news story if, like, Patrick Mullins confirmed to ride X horse in the Kimur. Do you know what oh, I mean? Okay. Well, maybe that's a question for Patrick and the punters panel, which you can get your questions in <laughs> on FTHM at paddypower.com. Ask him who's riding in the Kimur, if he's riding in it. I'm sure he'll tell us. Uh, Ruby nominated Rian, uh, who was, he said, I catch him behind Hartwood in the, the handicap chase at DRF. As at 11.15, wasn't entered. Oh, no, okay. But no, he might be, he might be. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd have to double check, but he was eye-catching enough. Um, would have to prove he stays three and a quarter miles, though. Um, I could see where he's coming from, but yeah, yeah, I thought there was... But let's not spend any time if it wasn't entered oh, no, at the time. He, he but there was still be. 45 minutes. There's still 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, okay, and fair enough, fair enough. Like, uh, Am yeah. I right for Henry de Bromhead? Ruby uh, name-checked? This would be more my... Here we go. It'd be more one now that'd be on my shortlist, Excellent. definitely. Why? Um, rated 138 in Ireland, ran off 142 at Cheltenham in October. No issue, we'll, we'll get into the race. Um, when it ran in October, was well backed. Um, Stable mate, uh, Wacker Clan. Uh, no relation to the real the Wacker. Real Wacker, thanks. No relation. Um, ended up winning. But am I right? Was actually travelling very well, kind of third, fourth, the whole way around and looked to be going really well, jumping three out, made a mistake, and then the saddle slipped, and all chance kind of gone. Still finished fourth, but I thought, again, ran a really good race in the Paddy Power, and I think it was a relatively good renewal of the Paddy Power this year. Went fifth, again, a bit of scrimmaging, uh, I think going around two out was bypassed, was it? And just didn't get the clearest runs, and ran on well enough into fifth. Um, he looked at the horses, like, obviously, Meet the Waters, I think, was well handicapped. Panda Boy, James de Burley, just... 
yeah, I think it was a good enough renewal. Um, you have to remember too, he's gone off 11 to 2 favour for an Irish national. It didn't work out from there. I just think there's definitely a handicap in him. And I do think a bit of better ground would suit him. I don't think, I don't think I'd be going to him now if it's like soft, soft, heavy sort of ground. But if you're getting like good to soft ground, he very much interests me. Okay. Um, the selections from the team Dunboyne for Rory Angels Dawn he, he put up as a kind of like will run a race but to be fair to lads again they didn't have entries they were kind of yeah Angels Dawn I, yeah, my work, I said with her just I think she's just handicapped to the hill tonight yeah like, I think yeah, I think look, to run a race she won't win like I'm going to name a few that I thought were interesting as I was going through the entries this morning yes. Apple Away was in there oh off 137 okay she'd be very interesting um a little bit disappointed, you would say, at the weekend, but she wasn't ridden as forceful as maybe she has when she's won her very best. Um, and, like, obviously she's won a great one. I was heard last year, and you would say, oh, like, the reputation she seemed to have, she hasn't really backed it up over fences so far, but she'd turn up in a handicap of 137 would be a different story altogether. Um, you'd definitely have her um, on a short list of some sort. Uh, back in the last year, I thought it's another one who would be a wild price, I would imagine. Would you not go cross-country? I don't think he will. I'll tell okay. you why, because now that the cross country is Conditions. dropping in these grade one mm. you know, ex gold cup horses, just makes it impossible for him to be he is ground dependent too, he wants decent ground. Um if it came up decent ground in the cross country, he'd have a, a chance being the first four, maybe. But in all known form he can't beat the likes of Minindo, Delta Work, Galvin. So now he's like he could come back into Kim Yor off hundred and thirty and uh, he has run okay over a conventional fence at Cheltenham before. You go back two or two years, uh, I think in November, meeting over three miles three, he finished third of 137. Again, 130 would be borderline, depending on what way. I think maybe last year you might have got in, other years you wouldn't. Just again, he could be a wild price. Um, and I always kind of would have a second look at um, anything Martin Keeley has as well. I think I always loves Cheltenham, he does. Um, other ones interesting, Cool Survivor. Having campaigned as a three miler as a novice hurdler initially, um, and this year hasn't really been running over three miles over fences. Um, but uh, he was staying on fourth at DRF over two mile five, and I wouldn't be surprised if this had kind of been a long term aim. Um, he's interesting. Uh, I know your way your thinking's entered, but I'd be very surprised if he will meet the ratings band. Um, he's rated 143 in Ireland, so he would have to get two pounds or less. Yeah, okay. And I I think, considering the profile of the horse, I'd be surprised if the, if the handicapper didn't give him three pounds just least. to get him out of it. I would like to force <laughs> him into the ultimate, maybe. Yeah, fair enough. Or like they could run him in the plate as well. Um, but yeah, I just don't think he'll run. I okay. don't think he'll get in here. Meeting the waters in there, he's run rate rate one hundred forty five in Ireland. No Almost certainly yeah, won't. Can't get in. Uh, and then two more Percival de Galwa running very well at the GRF when he fell. I wouldn't say it's a done deal. Hartwell would have beaten him. I think he was going well enough and he stays a little bit further so I think he would have given Hartwood a run um, he's only gone up two pounds you imagine he might get a little bit extra from the British handicapper because he's relatively unexposed but I'm still looking at him getting a mark of 141 or 142 um, the one thing I would say is he had a nasty fall at the last would be my worry for him um, but he's interesting and I'll give you one again it'll be a price and I think this will be the race maybe be thinking about all year Mr Coffee. Oh, loves winning this oh, Jesus, hero Frank. of the no. turf. Oh, this horse. What are you talking about? He never wins. <laughs> He's zero from 13 over fences. Unbelievable. A huge gamble in 2022 oh. when we were taking him on. I must say it was very worrying some going to the last. I was like, oh my God. Like, I was like three quarter miles. He's no hope of getting the trip. I thought he was like a two miler early days. Um, and he only just lost out. He did win two mile handicap hurdle, didn't he, in his early days? He did yeah, win yeah, over two yeah, miles, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean back when he last won about fifteen years and ago. And then yeah. do you remember he was he was second in the Silly Isles, wasn't he? And then he stepped up to Kimura and was like, he's no chance of staying. And he very nearly pulled off the gamble off a mark of 137. But um this year, more like he's finished place in National Hunt Chase too last year, mm. albeit well beaten. He's finished place in a lot of races. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I'm just saying a lot of races. You're, yeah, you're never wins them. Yeah, but you're looking at potentially Considering how his season's gone, he was second at uh, Bet365 handing up chase at Doncaster over three miles um, off 140, a length and a half off forward plan. He's come out and was just touched off recently in the old Sky Bet chase, I think, wasn't he? Beaten half a length. Um, he's disappointed twice because he needs four pounds a result. One pound higher than the year he nearly landed the gamble. I just think 
if he runs the Kim Muir and, you know, it's three or four days beforehand and that's the plan and he's 25 or 33, which I think he would. Do you know what I mean? 33 to 1, second, third or fourths. Yeah. It's going to, they'll keep you ticking along too, like. Um, yep, yep, okay. Mr. Coffee, my eyes glazed be, over, sorry. I, I didn't hear the case because that horse never wins races. He never wins, but. No, he never wins. Uh, the, I'll give you an example. Rule the world. How many wins had he over fence before he won the Grand National? There's always exceptions. But of course you, there is. Yeah, yeah, there's always exceptions, but I just. But yeah. you still have Very to good. go on the best. You made a great case. You made a great case. He has a. He has a Mr. Coffee. He has a stronger chance Mr. than Coffee. you would think. Okay, Mr. Coffee. What, am I, are we going to put him down as your selection for this? Uh, you, you at get the moment, if, if you ask me at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking you right am now. Am I right? And Mr. Coffee would be the two that stood out to me as potentially who I'd want to be backing. But again, it's not one I need to get involved in now. No. Um, close to the time. But there too, that definitely okay. stood out to Mr. Me. Coffee. Anyone who's listening to the podcast of the weekend, weekend tipping, Colonel Mustard was heavily tipped up, horse who doesn't win races either. Anyway. Uh, Tom signed off with a bit of, a bit of Brit bashing. I'm not really sure where that came from, but uh, well, more kind of probably Irish... Things are going great in Ireland. We're going to slam the Brits. Ah, how about the we're, swimming? We're going well I, in the I'm delighted he, he mentioned the swimming. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Whiffen. Daniel Whiffen is, Jeez, is, is serious, he is brilliant. Serious yeah. prospect for the pool in the Olympics. Ah, he's an absolute he, 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 enough. He Olympics? also said, um, was it something, are, we're going to get a new manager soon. I think if me and you put our hand up in the ring for the football or soccer team, we've got well, a chance. Well, to be honest, this fella came on LinkedIn to me the other day and he goes, would you be interested in applying for the Ireland job? And he goes, would I what? Would you feck <laughs> off? No interest. The Brits are going to get a bashing, says Tom, anyway. Um, we're going to sign off. A reminder of those turbo power prices on site. Before we do, I have a few bits to get through. Producer Mark, I mean, I get a few bits. Don't worry, you can go. I know you, you're you itching to tell us about what mistakes the lads made. But anyway, uh, don't forget the turbo power prices on site. The Cheltenham Fan Zone tickets, the link in the show notes as well. Uh, upcoming podcast this weekend, Fridays with Fran. Myself and Fran will be looking ahead to Dundalk, and then the lads will be looking ahead to the weekend. Go on then, Frank. What mistakes did they make? Well, Ruby was on, but Lamy lost at 1-4-2, but he's rate, and, and running in the Kim Muir, even though he's rated 150 over fences. So. I did notice he wasn't in the betting when Ruby was I, talking. Yeah, about, I uh, reckon yeah. Sunstroke. Could you put out the Sunstroke? Could have been, it could have been, and that's okay. You know? and that's, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's legitimate okay. reason. It is a legitimate reason. Um, the other thing I was going to say, uh, I was asked to mention, on a Chetland preview. You are? Yes. Excellent. In Abbey Leaks, uh, Saturday Great week. Great town. Yeah, I actually, Saturday week, Johnny Deneen's on as well for people who want to. Johnny Deneen and Frank Hickey. Yeah, very strong opinions. Very Cork oriented. Strong chat. opinions. I did know. I did see that on the list. The Irish Field published the list of all the Cheltenham previews. Frank Hickey, you are costing a few quid for people who want to go to this. Do you see the price? Uh, there's dinner and music. Uh, and stuff mind the dinner. I know one. there's dinner, but do you know how much it is? Seventy five quid. Seventy five. Seventy five euro for this I, fella. And, I, I, and I, I am Frank Hickey. I am getting zero. Doing it off out of the goodness of my heart. Sure you are, but uh, you want to you want to give a few winners, or at least the food want to be good anyway. I would come here. As in, I like I like the idea though of at least it's a bit of entertainment and dinner and whatever rather than it is. Depending on them dinner. charge twenty five quid and you get nothing bar the tips. You get three courses. A, a menu curated by yourself, no doubt? I have no idea. Batter I'm sure it'd be lovely. Batter sausage and chips. Sure it'd Happy be days. As I said, do check out the Paddy Bear website for the Turbo Power Price. Thanks a million, Frank. As always, I really enjoyed your company. That was a very thorough and longer episode than the one we were reviewing. Um, it's amazing what you can do when you do a bit of homework, lads. That's what I'd say to Rory and Ruby. We'll be back next week taking uh, taking their tips. Uh, we're looking at the handicaps proper, I imagine, next week. At least I think so, anyway. I right. hope so. I hope so. Uh, do check out this very channel, the Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel, for more content, including that Punters panel episode, which you can get involved in. But until then, have a great weekend. The Coral Trophy winner this Saturday is... I thought Unanswered Prayers, if you're in. Unanswered Prayers. There you go. We'll sign off on that. See you next week. <laughs>